Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches seeds just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes the Spider-Man. Greetings all and welcome to Unrepented Geeking, the show where a geek can be a geek. As always, I'm your host Sean Kronenfeld and we've got a lot to cover today so let's get right down to it. I am here to talk to you about the all new, all different Marvel Comics. If you don't know, if you haven't heard, if you haven't been paying attention, Marvel Comics is in the middle of one of their bigger events in recent memory, Secret Wars. The whole Marvel Ultimate Universe, Marvel Multiverse, it's all been destroyed. It's it's gone forever, right? Well, no, of course it isn't. It's coming back. And now, as of today, we have a good idea, uh, at least some idea, of what shape and form it's going to take when it returns. Marvel has unveiled 46 of their upcoming relaunches, restarts, new books that will be be start launching in October. And I'm here to go over them all one by one for all of you. So let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Damn it, damn it. Sorry about that. Thanks to countless years of having that song drilled into my head via endless re-listens and people posting on YouTube and all sorts of stuff, I am now physically incapable of not singing the second verse of that song when I hear the phrase... Well, you know the phrase. <sighs> I just wish so many people didn't decide to use said phrase when performing a job interview. So many ruined opportunities for employment. <clears throat> Alright, enough of my uniquely disturbing mental trauma. Let's get on with the show. So, basically, Marvel... now. These are not necessarily going to be all of Marvel's upcoming relaunches. Marvel has said probably between 55 and 60 new books are coming. And it's not clear also when all these books will be launching. The relaunch starts the all new, all different, you know, that's that's basically the name for the for the line wide relaunch. That begins in October. But whether or not all these books are coming out in October remains to be seen none of the we don't have release dates for these what we have is the creative teams the titles and a little tagline to give you some idea of what may or may not be happening in the book so what we have here is a good start so and marvel has said there will probably be you know 60 55 books like i said and this is just about 46 so Perhaps there is more, 46, 47, perhaps there is more coming down the line. I wouldn't be shocked to see Marvel announce some more things at San Diego Comic-Con next week. I, I, this Basically, all this is coming from, an on, from a book that Marvel's releasing for free tomorrow in comic book shops, or today as of you watching this, probably, titled All New, All Different Previews. So it's a free book with covers for all the new books, so you get the basic idea. And this being the era we live in, basically everything got leaked it got leaked starting yesterday and now it's all out there the covers all of that the creative teams so you know that's what you get honestly when you release a a book when you send these books to comic book shops early you know when you send them out monday yeah guess what the news is gonna leak and marvel's acting all offended and pissed off that you know how dare people cover these leaks but i mean Really, I, I think that's a load of bull. I, I think they expected this to happen. I think they were counting on it to happen. And if it hadn't happened yesterday and today, it would have certainly happened tomorrow when people got their hands on the book. So, you know, whatever. It happened. It's done. Let's just all move on with our lives, eh? Okay? All right. So, these are the... Again, I think there's like uh, 48, 49. Maybe, these is, maybe this is the full lineup. I suspect we've still got a couple more surprises coming. But... Who knows? It's it's Marvel. Uh, by the way, I think we have a couple more surprises coming, if for no other reason than there are at least a couple characters on those two preview images that I talked about in the past that are not featured in this. But okay, let's just get down to it. First up, we have the all we have Invincible Iron Man number one from Brian Michael Bendis writing and David Marquez art with the tagline upgrade. I've actually talked about this before on an episode of Rambling, so I'll just say 
This is a great creative team. I'm excited to see where we go with this book. Let's just move on. Next, we have A Force number one. This is a relaunch for the book that, you know, just launched during Secret Wars. This will be an incontinuity version. We have G. Willow Wilson writing and Victor Abednis on art and covers. The tagline is A Force. Get it? A Force. Because the title of the book is A Dash Force. So, A Force to be reckoned with. It's a horrible pun. I thoroughly approve. On the cover, we've got Captain Marvel, we've got Medusa, She-Hulk, the new character Singularity, Nico uh, from Runaways with a really weird redesign, and also with a bit of an odd redesign, Dazzler, plus the faces of a bunch of other Marvel heroes, including Spider-Gwen. So, this is, you know, this is, I've been loving A-Force so far. The first issue was very good. I'm glad to see the concept is going to continue forward after Secret Wars. I like this grouping, even if I think Carol's now going to be on several teams, but eh, if Wolverine can do it, it's a good creative team, it's a good mix of lineup, I'm excited for this book. Honestly, I'm excited for most of these books, but okay. Then we have the all-new, all-different Avengers, written by Mark Wade, with art by both Adam Kubert and Muhammad Asara. They're basically going to alternate arcs and covers from time to time by Alex Ross, tagline, Earth's Mightiest, Scratched Out Mightiest, Earth's Mightiest Heroes with Mightiest Scratched Out and Replaced with Most Dedicated. This is, of course, the team consisting of Thor, the new female Thor, Captain America, a.k.a. Falcon, the Falcon Cap, Iron Man, which is Tony Stark, the new Nova, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, and Vision. So, this is theoretically the flagship maybe of Avengers going on. There's going to be a lot of Avengers books coming out because there already were. So, but this is, you know, this has got Mark Wade, This has got Kubert. This has got uh, Muhammad. I, this is probably the flagship Avengers book if I had to guess. And I'm excited as all hell. Again, this is one I've talked about previously, so I'm not going to say much here. Good team. I, I'm excited for it. All right. Now we're heading into new territory. Are you guys ready? Uncanny Avengers number one. Written by Jerry Duggan, art by Ryan Stegman. Tagline, fighting for humanity, inhumanity, mutants, dot, 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 and Deadpool. Team consists of Spider-Man, Quicksilver, Brother Voodoo, Steve Rogers, a human torch, or Toro. Could be either, I'm willing to bet it's going to either be the Jim Hammond, you know, classic Golden Age human torch, or Toro, plus Rogue. A character I don't quite recognize, actually. I think she may be from a recent Invader storyline. I don't know. I don't I don't recognize her. And, of course, Deadpool. So, Deadpool's joining the Avengers. Why not? Everybody else has. Seriously, though, I, I think it's a neat idea having Deadpool on the team. And, you know, he and Steve, over the last couple years, dug in, on, uh, in the Deadpool book, has established, you know, kind of a friendship, an unexpected friendship between... Captain America slash Steve Rogers and Deadpool. So it kind of makes sense that Cap's team would have Deadpool on it. He could be sort of the Wolverine of the book, but he's also going to be obviously Deadpool. I, I, I'm i intrigued by this. I love that Spider-Man is sticking... Oh, this is the Peter Parker Spider-Man, by the way, just to be clear. My only concern, my only real concern is Deadpool and Spider-Man on one book, on one team? I mean... I assume part of the point will be them stepping on each other's lines and them, you know, getting into wise crack offs. I don't know. Done right, it could work. Done wrong, it could be a real disaster. Duggan's a great writer, so hopefully he'll have it right. Beyond that, it's an interesting team. It's an interesting setup. It's a good mixture of characters from across the Marvel Universe. I'm all in for it. All right, continuing along the Avengers kick, we have New Avengers number one. From Al Ewing writing and Geraldo Sanabdova, I really apologize for any names I butcher on art. Tagline, Avengers Ideas Mechanics. We aim a dot m dot i, a dot i dot m dot, basically it's, anyways you get it. We aim to help. Team consisting of Sunspot, Songbird, woo, Songbird's back, Hawkeye, Squirrel Girl, Hulkling and Wiccan. Now, this is interesting. One of the things you got to understand is we're getting a lot of books here with very different, where, where names are being reused in a very different way. Like, the Uncanny Avengers previously was the X-Men Avengers, you know, team-up team. And now that's less so with just basically Rogue and arguably Quicksilver. I, I guess he's not technically a mutant anymore. So, 
and so similarly, New Avengers up at you know the most recent incarnation of New Avengers was basically the Illuminati. I guess at the time they thought they couldn't do an Illuminati book, which is funny as we'll get to later. But yeah, New Avengers. So now what we really have is a team that's picking up the pieces, as a number of these books appear to be doing, from the just completed Jonathan Hickman run, which in, in the course of he established that Sunspot went off and bought out AIM, you know, which used to be Advanced Ideas Mechanics, a terrorist group, one of the Hydra-like groups that long existed in the Marvel Universe. Well, he bought it out because Sunspot is a former New Mutant who also is the heir to this corporation, so he's got lots and lots of money. He bought it out and decided to use it for the good of people, and he, he basically tried to stop the whole Secret Wars thing on his own, along with a bunch of other characters. Didn't quite work, obviously. But, so this is clearly his team post-Secret Wars. And it's an interesting mix of characters. First of all, I love that Songbird's back. She basically, if you don't know, Songbird is a character from, you know, introduced in Busey's uh, classic Thunderbolts run. Uh, I mean, she used to be a villainous, screaming Mimi, and then she eventually turned her life around, tried to become a good guy. All that stuff. And I, I you know, she's a favorite of mine because I love that. I love both Busey's and then Fabian Nassizia's run on Thunderbolts. I love the Thunderbolts in general. That incarnation... I'm less enamored with later what's been done with the book. That There's been some decent stuff. But anyways, I'm a real big fan of the classic Thunderbolts run, and I'm a real big fan of this character. So, yeah, I am all for Songbird coming back. She and Hawkeye used to have a history. Presumably they'll exploit that. Having Squirrel go on a team is interesting. She's a fun character. She can be the lightweight, you know, the, 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 the light, happy character. And then you've got Hulk and, Hulking and Wiccan, both great characters from the Young Avengers. Nice to see them also being picked back up. There's a lot of, I, I, what you get, what we're getting a lot of, what you're going to see in a lot of these books is not necessarily dramatic reinventions. It's pretty clear the Marvel Universe we're going to be getting after Secret Wars is going to be at least v- vaguely familiar. Certainly far more familiar than, say, the DC Universe was in the New 52 era. This is not, a, as Marvel's been saying all along, not going to be a full reboot. But at the same time, we are seeing some shakeups in terms of what characters are going where and who's doing what. And that's fun to see. That's the point. That should be the point of doing these big events. The aftermath should lead to some fun new things, things we haven't necessarily seen before. So Al Ewing is one of the, quietly, it's become one of the best writers at Marvel. I've been loving his stuff, and I think New Avengers is going to be a, a, a real hoot. So that's definitely one to look forward to. And while we're on the Al Ewing train, he's got another book, and it's our next title, Ultimates Number 1. Again, like I said, books use reusing titles in a completely different version, in a different way. Ultimates used to be basically the Ultimate Universe's version of the Avengers, but the Ultimate Universe is no more. Alas, alas, alas. And indeed, this new title does not feature any characters from the Ultimate Universe, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be excited. The tagline for Ult- it, Ultimate Number 1 comes again from Owling writing... Kenneth Roquefort on art, so it's going to look gorgeous. Tagline, ultimate problems need ultimate solutions. This book features a team of Black Panther, Spectrum, a.k.a. Monica Rabal. You'll know her from Next Wave. Um, Blue Marvel, who's been a character who's been hanging around, you know, been, he was a big part of uh, Mighty Avengers. He, you know, he's he was a character who was a black superhero basically in the 60s or 70s, a Superman-esque figure who used to have to hide his identity because he's black. And he's still around in modern day, and he's a great character. Then we have uh, 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 the Chavez, Miss America, one of my favorite new characters from Marvel in the last couple of years. Uh, we have Carol again, Captain Marvel. Like I said, she's on a couple different teams, how that's going to work. And then the final member of the team, Galacticus. Yes, Galacticus, as a giant purple guy with helmet and all that. Indeed, the cover, as you can see, if you're watching the video version of this, has the rest of the team standing in Galactus's hands. How the hell do you have Galactus as a member of a team book? I don't know, and I cannot wait to find out. I mean, this is such a great mixture of different characters and just, oh, what a, I mean, you know, American, uh, Miss America is just a great character. They're all great characters. I, I'm so excited to see what Ewing has up his sleeve for Ultimates number one. This is probably the book I'm looking forward to more than anything else in all new Marvel. So I said it, yeah, Ultimates number one. I just, I love the sheer ridiculous audacity of putting Galactus on a team book. Again, how this will work, I don't know. I can't wait to find out. 
All right, moving on. One of my five favorite Marvel characters. And yeah, I probably am going to do a top five or top ten or something along that lines for both DC and Marvel favorite characters somewhere down the line. I've had people ask. But anyways, one of my top five favorite Marvel characters is once again getting his own ongoing after being away for quite a few years. Well, he's not really been away, but not being on his own. It's Doctor Strange number one, written by, are you ready for this? Jason Aaron with art by Chris Bocello. Now, Bocello could be, you know, he's had some trouble in the past, but these days he's been doing some damn good work more, you know, in the, in the last couple of years. He's an artist who lost himself for a while in the 90s and the aughts, but I, in the last couple of years he's come back and done much stronger work. Jason Aaron is just You know, he's Jason Aaron. He's just one of the best writers in comics today. Tagline for the book. Sometimes, some surgery requires a scalpel. Some, an axe. And we have Doctor Strange holding a big honking axe on the cover. It looks kind of like the axe that Thor was using for a while. I'm not sure if it really is. Regardless, yes. Obviously, I'm all down for Jason Aaron doing Doctor Strange. He's promising a different take on the character. So, get hyped. Next up, Captain Marvel number one. Tagline, Captain Marvel Rises. Creative team, Tara Butters and Michelle Fakiza Fasikas writing. Chris Anka on art. If you aren't aware, those two writers I just mentioned, they're also the showrunners for Marvel's brilliant, excellent Agent Carter TV series. This is their first comics work, so it's great to see two already established voices outside of comics, but you've shown they know how to handle the Marvel Universe right, coming in and taking on one of Marvel's best female characters. Again, I said top ten. Carol would definitely be in my top ten. I'm not sure if she'd be in my top five or not. That kind of fluctuates. But anyways, I'm real, you know, this is going to be, I think, a great book. They are great writers. It's got a good artist. They've got some interesting ideas to explore. They've slightly redesigned the character. Overall, there's a reason to be excited for this book. Now, our next book marks something interesting, that a couple of long-established Marvel voices are basically going away, at least for a while. Um, as I said, Jonathan Hickman isn't doing anything post-Secret Wars, which makes sense, because Secret Wars is the culmination of his entire, you know, decade at Marvel. But the other writer who's also going to be taking a break for at least a year is Rick Remender. Remender's been doing a lot of great work. His Captain America run is one of the all-time classics, right up there with Mark Wade, with the John Byrne run. I mean, so... He, he's gone. He's done. He's leaving. You, you already saw he's not coming back to Uncanny Avengers, and he's also not coming back to Cap, which is relaunching as Sam Wilson, Captain America number one. But don't worry, people, because there is a very strong team replacing him. We've got Nick Spencer writing and Daniel Acuna on art. Tagline, who do you stand with? The art re- reflects, the cover reflects something that was hinted at in the Free Comic Book Day, All New, All Different Avengers book. Basically, it's a, in the background, we have a picture of Cap and Falcon from Better Days shaking hands. That picture is ripped in half. Then we have, you know, facing away from each other and walking away. We have Steve Rogers and we have Sam Wilson, Captain America. So clearly something has happened. A schism has, has erupted between these two once best friends, brothers, you know, all but, you know, in all but blood. And that's where we're picking up. Spencer is a terrific writer. So, I expect great things. Akuna is a great artist. Overall, let's just say, there's there's, there's very few weak links among the creatives in this whole all-new-all-different lineup, honestly. So, if you've been a fan of Captain America up until now, I suspect you will not be disappointed by its new writer. Now, next up, we have something that's been already kind of controversial, but which you're not going to be shocked. I'm excited for the Totally Awesome Hulk, number one, written by Greg Pack. Art by Frank Cho. Tagline, who is the Hulk? And if you're a longtime Hulk fan, the name Greg Pack should immediately ring a bell because he had one of the best runs on the characters in recent memory, with including his seminal story, Planet Hulk, followed up by one of my favorite crossovers, World War Hulk. So I am super, super hyped to see Pack returning sort of to the character because we know Bruce Banner is not the Hulk anymore. Where Bruce is, we don't know. I'm assuming that will eventually be established. They're playing coy with who the totally awesome Hulk is, but it seems pretty clear from rumors and from hints that it's none other than Amadeus Cho, a character that Greg Pack helped create and make, well, awesome. 
<laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Um, back in, back in his Hulk books and his World War Hulk run and his Hercules book. So Pack returning to a character sort of that he you know that he made, he did a terrific run on. He knows the Hulk universe. He understands the character, his supporting players, how to tell a good Hulk story. Now I know a lot of people don't like that title, but I think you got to understand. Yes, the Totally Awesome Hulk is a stupid title. It's a stupid title by design. I, Pack knows it's a ridiculous title. That's the point. So, yeah, very excited for that. Next up, we have, well, this is technically the all-new, all-different Marvel, but this isn't so much new or different, but it's still great. So, The Mighty Thor, number one, written by Jason Aaron, art by Russell Dodderman. Tagline, the flesh may be weak, but the thunder is strong. We have a picture of our new uh, female Thor. She, you know, the cover is divided in half. We have her plus her alternate identity. If you still don't know it, I guess I won't spoil it for you, though. The news is all out there. There's not really much to say about this. Aaron's Thor has, you know, I said that Greg Pak had a seminal Hulk run. Well, Aaron's Thor has been just as good. And it's going to go down in history as one of the best takes on the character ever. And this is just him basically picking up where he left off. I presume, pre-Secret Wars. There is no reason not to be excited for this book. Next up, we have... Yeah, we have Scarlet Witch number one. Written by Jason... Written by James Robinson. Art by Kevin Wada. Tagline, Seeing Red. I... Look, I love the Scarlet Witch. She's a great character. I'm not really convinced she can either needs or can support her on ongoing, but, you know, this is what Marvel does these days. They launch these kind of, you know, ongoings for characters who are unlikely to be able to support them, and if they get 12 issues, they're lucky, and I suspect that will be the case with Scarlet Witch as well. We have a redesign for the character. Beyond that, I don't know much. I mean, I'm certain it will be a good book. James Robinson is a classic writer. He's written some amazing seminal stories. He did, you know, Golden Age. He he did uh, just a bunch of terrific comics. He's been in strong form lately, both of his, you know, with his Marvel work and his indie stuff. It will be a good book. He will probably be able to justify the character on her own. I just, I don't know if financially there's enough of an audience there, but what the hell? I guess you try and you see what sticks. Next up, we have Miss Marvel number one. See, you were all worried over nothing. Kamala is back, and boy is she ever. Written, as always, by G. Willow Wilson. Art by the alternating teams of Takahashi Miyazawa and Adrian Afona, with Miyazakawa, sorry again, doing cover art, tagline, crushed it. Miss Marvel, best book Marvel's putting out. One of them, certainly, you should be reading it. Nuff said. So, remember how earlier I mentioned that Marvel basically, New Avengers was basically the Illuminati, but not called the Illuminati because Marvel didn't think the Illuminati could sell? Well, I guess they've changed their mind, because next we have Illuminati number one. Art written by Jeon Williamson. Art by Sean Crystal. Cover by Raleigh Rosamo. Now, this is not the Illuminati we know. The tagline is Forever Evil, and that's with a good reason, because central on the cover, we have the hood, with a bunch of other ne'er-do-wells beneath him in silhouette. So, apparently the cabal is now going by the Illuminati. Eh? That's pretty much my, my, my reaction. I, I'm not familiar with any of these creators, or not really... I'm not really sure what's going on with the concept. I mean, a villain book can work, but it's tricky. I, I This is one of the ones I will approach with cautious optimism. I, You know, I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm not saying it's going to be good. We will see. Either it will be interesting or not. We will see. All right, next up, we have Hawkeye number one, Jeff Lemire writing, Ramon Perez on art. Tagline, Hawkeye versus Hawkeye. And this is another strange one. We have in the foreground, Kate Bishop Hawkeye, which great, great character, terrific character, as I'm going to talk, you know, I'm loving seeing her. She, she's been a big part of the Hawkeye books in, in recent memory. In the background, we have what appears to be an old Hawkeye. Some people are saying it's Old Man Hawkeye from the Old Man Logan book, which kind of would make sense, except that Old Man Logan seems to be, because he's coming into the Marvel Universe, as we'll get to shortly, but that version of the character it appears to be coming post the original Old Man Logan series, which, you know, spoiler warning, Old Man Hawkeye, as it were, dies in. But also, 
the Hawkeye we're seeing in this image, that Hawkeye was blind, and he wore, you know, he wore like a, a headband around his eyes and stuff. This doesn't, this one doesn't seem to be blind. I mean, I'm just making an assumption from a cover. I don't know. I, it's still strange. What's going on here? Why do we have an old Hawkeye? Why is he going up against young Hawkeye? I don't know. I'm intrigued. Jeff Lemire is a writer I, I've been enjoying for years now. I'm happy to see him, you know, increasing his presence at Marvel. I'm quite certain Hawkeye will be a gorgeous-looking, interesting book. So, we will see where this is, you know, going. Uh, next up, we have another all, not so all new and not so all different. Ant-Man number one. Nick Spencer continuing his writing of it. Ro- Raymond Rosanna on art. Mark Brooks on covers. Tagline, Once a Criminal. This is, of course, the Scott Lang Ant-Man who will be getting his own, you know, whose movie will be releasing in a couple weeks. We have him standing, you know, he's in color, the rest of the cover is in black and white, and he's standing in front of a group of villains, including a regular supporting player in his book, Grizzly. We have the female Beetle. So, I, I suspect there's, this is all, you know, this is a fake out. That's what I suspect we're getting. I don't think all Ant-Man's really gone bad again, but who knows? Maybe he has. It, Spencer has done things like that before. We will see where this is. This this was a good book pre-Secret Wars. I expect it to continue to be afterwards. Next up, remember how I said I was dubious about Scarlet Witch being able to carry her own book? Well, her frequent paramour is getting his own book, and I'm equally uncertain about that. Yes, Vision Number 1, written by Tom King, art by Gabriel H. Wada, covers by Marcos Martin, tagline, a bold new vision, get it, for the Marvel Universe. Uh, We've gotten some information about this book. The idea is that Vision goes off and creates a family for himself, a family of androids, a wife and two teenage kids, and they go live in suburbia, and he has a secret identity, and then something goes horribly wrong. And, yeah, like Scarlet Witch, if this thing lasts for more than 12 issues, I will be shocked. Again, I, I love the Vision. He's certainly in my top 10 Marvel characters, but... I am unconvinced the character needs or can support a solo ongoing series. But he's in other books. If this if this crashes and burns like I think it might, oh well, no harm done. And hey, if it takes off, great. I'm certainly not going to be upset if it becomes a huge success. So, there you go. Next, Contest of Champions, number one. Written by Al Ewing. Art by Paco Medina. Tagline, when heroes gather, this is a weird book if you don't know. This is basically a tie-in to the mobile game of the same name. So it's not even, I don't think, it's set in continuity. Not only that, but it's telling stories apparently set between moments in the game. Because the idea of the game is basically a fighting game on mobile. And the idea is that, you know, these cosmic beings, Marvel cosmic beings, as they are wont to do, have gathered up a whole bunch of Marvel characters and are forcing them to constantly beat the shit out of each other. Basically, they're under mind control. They have no choice when they're in battle. And you as a player have been are, are on one side of the contest and bad guys are on the others. And you got to control your heroes and all that. So, the idea is supposed to be that this book takes place between the fights and explores what the heroes are doing when they're not being mind-controlled, even though it seemed like they were just being kept frozen and crystals, and that's even on the cover, and what is this? I don't even... I said Al Ewing is a, is a terrific writer. Paco Medina is certainly a strong artist. It will be a good book, I am certain. Will I be reading it? I have no idea. It's got Maestro on the cover too, so that's neat. We'll see what comes of this. I, again, I'm not even clear. I, it's not even certain if it's in continuity or not, so... Uh-huh. All right. We are now moving for a bit into the spider side of the verse. Particularly the Mar- the Spider-Verse, yes. And we are going to take a look at a number of Spider Family books. Starting with the one, the only, the man himself... It's Amazing Spider-Man number one, written by Dan Slott. Art by Galipsby, Kamenako, covers by Alex Ross. Tagline, your friendly neighborhood just got bigger. The cover is an Alex Ross cover, though it's one of his better ones in my opinion. We see Peter in a tux looking at, you know, a a watch that's going off. We have a version of Spider-Man which seems to be also going off of the same signal, flying to the city, and then beneath him what looks like another Spider-Man in the old, in a revamped version of the Spider-Mobile, and prominently in the image we also have a a skyscraper emblazoned with Parker Industries. 
We know that according to what people have been saying, the upcoming Spider-Man, which we'll get to, will be more of the street-level version of the character. So this is a presumable... A lot of people hoped, well, maybe that meant we're going to get a very different take for Peter because well, they were obviously not going to take away Peter for good. I I mean, no. I, I kind of hoped maybe, but no. I wouldn't mind if Peter retired from Spider-Man for a few years. I, I think it wouldn't do the character any harm. Let him get let him get remarried to Mary Jane. Let him do that. Let him do that! But nope. Nope. I mean, I'd hope that would be the big hook. That the, that the that when Peter came back post Secret Wars, and maybe he will be, but this cover doesn't sure doesn't make it look like it. Instead, it looks like we're getting Secret Agent Spider Man, and yeah, I'm not really excited for that at all, and I'm not really excited for this book at all. Look, I think Dan Slott is a great writer. Never let anybody tell you that he's a bad writer. And what he's been doing with Silver Surfer, which is not in this book, I'm disappointed to see. I, I'm afraid it may actually be canceled. I, I'd be really bummed. But regardless, what he's been doing with Silver Surfer has just been brilliant. He's basically doing Silver Surfer by way of Doctor Who, and it's just been so much fun with art by Mike Allard. You should go check it out if you like just fun comic books, or if you like Doctor Who, or if you just like crazy, wonderful, glorious things. But he's been on Spider-Man way too long. Think whatever you want. Post new, I mean, there's people out there who just hate Dan Slott, who thinks he's the worst human being on the planet, and yeah, he can be a lit to fit defensive when he's, you know, I mean, but then again, the level of shit he gets, look, I'm not going to take a side in that fight. I don't think Dan Slott is a horrible human being. I do think he sometimes has said stupid things, but then again, who of us hasn't? How many times have I said stupid things in the course of this review alone? But whatever, the point is, he really needs to get off Spider-Man. His Silver Surfer's been so much better than anything he's done on Spider-Man in years. He's done with the character, and I know they're doing something completely different, but that just just feels like, no, Dan, go away from this character. You had your run. It's a, you know, you've been on the run for as long as I think anybody, except short of Brian Michael Bendis at this point. So just go on, let it go. (sighs) Oh, well. Speaking of Bendis, Spider-Man number one, Brian Michael Bendis writing, Sarah Pacelli on art, Ted Line. Welcome to the Marvel Universe, Miles Morales. Hope you survived the experience. I've talked about this already before in a previous episode. I am as excited as hell. It's Bendis. It's Bendis doing Miles. It's Bendis doing Miles with the artist who helped create him. She's a terrific artist. There's no reason not to buy this book. Buy this book. This is the Spider-Man book I'll be buying. Next, we have in the what the hell is this I don't even category... Carnage number one, <sighs> written by of all people Jerry Conway, art by Mike Perkins, covers by Mike Del Del Mundo, tagline Descent into Madness. I don't like Carnage. I really, really don't like Carnage. I find him a dull, one-note, boring character. I kind of really hate the character. He make he, he's useful, I guess, occasionally as a guest, you know, as a villain for Peter to go up against. But even then, there are other, you know, villains I'd much rather see him fight first than ever Carnage. And if Carnage never shows up in the movies, I'll be very happy. But okay, Jerry Conway's a weird choice. It feels like he's a, you know, he's an old school writer. Maybe he's got something interesting, but I'm not going to be reading it. If I hear amazing things about Carnage, maybe I'd give it a try, but... Bah. Next up, Spider-Woman number one, written by Dennis Hopeless, art by Javier Rodriguez. Cover features a very pregnant uh, Jessica Drew. Tagline, parent by day, hero by night. Hopeless's run on Spider-Woman has been some, you know, awkwardness with... Greg Land art aside, fairly strong. He's got a good take on the character. The pregnancy thing seems to be coming out of nowhere, but that's kind of the point of all new, all different. If you don't know, all these books are jumping ahead eight months after Secret Wars. So the idea is that we're coming into all these books, you know, in the middle of the story almost, or after dramatic, not not in the middle of the story, but after dramatic events have happened. So we're all going to be on the same page. That's the idea. And clearly Spider-Woman's taking advantage of that been a good book so far i suspect it will be a good book continuing here's another same thing to say spider gwen number one same creative team beforehand before secret wars jason latour writing robbie rodriguez on art tagline the secret history of gwen stacy and peter parker in the main book you know in spider gwen the first five issues they built up a lot between the relationship between 
Gwen and Peter. Peter died basically in this becoming in this universe becoming the lizard, and it killed him. And she's ba- he's basically her uncle Ben. He's the reason that Spider Gwen became a hero and stays a hero. You know, power and responsibility. So this has been a terrific book from Marvel. It will continue to be so. Same thing with Silk Number One. Robbie Thompson writing, Stacey Lee art, Helen Chin um, covers. Tagline, Sinister Silk, like Ant-Man, they're teasing Silk's gone bad. Like Ant-Man, I don't buy it for a minute. This will, like Ant-Man, this has been a good book up until now. It, it's helped, you know, rehabilitate the character somewhat, who, thanks to Dan Slott, came off a bit at times as a Mary Sue, but in her own book, especially with Thompson writing it, he's done good, strong, solid work with the character. She's an interesting addition. She's no longer feels like such a Mary Sue. And I'm glad to see that he'll be continuing his run after Secret Wars. And I'm starting to sound like a broken record here. I have similar things to say about Spider-Man 2099 number one. This is written by the man, the myth, the legend. Peter David is continuing his run with this with the character he helped create. Art by Will Slinney. Uh, covers Francisco Matina. Tagline, Smack to the Future. Now, interesting to note that 2099 has got a dramatically different costume, Spidey, on this cover. So that's interesting. And it appears after spending some time in present day, not long enough in my opinion. I would have actually liked to see the present day stretched out a bit more, but fine. After spending some time in present day, yet it looks like the new book is going to be set firmly in 2099. Whatever that means, post-Secret Wars. Although it looks like the cover might be divided between a future setting and a present day setting. I don't I don't know. Maybe, maybe it won't all be entirely set in the future. Regardless, Peter David is a writer I will follow to anything. There is almost nothing Peter David could choose to write that I would not be interested in reading. He is one of my all-time favorite writers, just period. And I am excited, you know, so it's great to see he's continuing with a character he has such a long storied history with. And then rounding out Spider-Man, we have the Spider-Verse. We have the Spider-Verse. Web Warriors number one, written by Mike Costa. Art by David Baudion. Covers by Julian Totino Tedesco. Tagline, Defending the Spider-Verse. We have a cover, on the cover we have Spider-Man Noir. We have Spider-Girl from the mainline Marvel Universe. We have Captain Britain Spidey, India Spidey. Um, we have Spider-Ham and of course we have Gwen Stacy, you know, Spider-Gwen. So this seems to be picking up both from where the Spider-Verse event and the current Secret War Spider-Verse which, FYI, I wasn't enamored, all that enamored with the first issue of Secret War Spider-Verse, but the second issue was stronger, much stronger. It, You know, I, I love crossing over universes, I love bringing them together. This is something of an odd concept, but what the hell. These are a fun group of characters, let's see what Costa can do with it. He's a writer, seems to have a good handle on the voices. It'll be a fun book. How long it will last, I don't know. I mean, you could make the arc of it, do we really need eight different Spider-Man books, but then again, you know, the ship has long since sailed in Marvel over doing things like that, as we will get to shortly. Okay, next up, it's the, the era has ended, and a new era begins with Daredevil number one, not from Mark Wade, but from Charles Soule, who's been doing just terrific work on the Inhumans line, and has is, is proven himself an expert comic writer, art by classic, you know, longtime artist, Ron Garney, tagline The Devil's Apprentice. This is interesting. We have Daredevil in a new that new black costume, and also on the cover, apparently the titular apprentice, Gambit. Now, I am a huge, huge, huge Gambit fan. Love the character. Again, probably in my top ten, certainly in my top twenty Marvel characters. I I I don't know what the hell he's doing with Daredevil. He has actually met Daredevil a couple times in the past, but not not any you know, they they have a slight history, I guess. Nothing major plus it was you know it was the 90s so eh. well i don't know you know look if you're it looks like and it also looks like daredevil's back in new york i've really been loving obviously what mark wade's been doing with the character it's my favorite run on daredevil probably ever yeah ever i think mark wade's had the best run on the character pretty much ever and part of what i liked is that he hasn't just you know he, he deliberately moved away from the dark grim, you know, angst, 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 that it's become such a defining part of Daredevil, you know, following the Bendis years and all that stuff, and I understand that after a run like Mark Wade, you gotta go in a different direction, you can't just try and copy what he's gonna do, that's a mistake, but I don't know, I really hope, I I guess we'll see, I really hope we're just not going back to grim, grim, 
uh, Matt, you know, Matt Murdock. At least Gambit being in there is an interesting swerve. All right. Guardians of the Galaxy number one by Brian Michael Bendis. And on art, Valerio Shitty. She's Shitai. I, Valerie, I don't know if that's a guy or girl. Whatever. I'm sorry for butchering that particular name. Tagline, the raccoon is in charge. Now, this is interesting. We have Rocket. We have Drax. We have Venom, who's been on the team for a bit now. We have, of course, Groot, although with a redesign. But then we have, as was teased, Ben Grimm the Thing and what appears to be a female Star-Lord. And what people are thinking, and this makes sense in light of what's both been going on with the character and other things, it looks like that's probably Kitty Pride wearing a variation on Star-Lord's outfit. So that means Peter Quill and Gamora are not in the book at the moment. So that's interesting. But this is run on... Guardians has been one of his better team books so I'll see where he's going with this I, I'm all, I'm a big Ben Grimm fan so I'm happy to see him you know getting into some space antics and well Rocket's now the leader that could get interesting remember how I said Marvel likes to overextend things yeah guess who's getting his own book Drax yes Drax number one written by CM Punk yes that, the former wrestler with Cullen Bunn who is just, you know, one of the best writers in comics today, art by Ed McGinnis. So it's, you know, doing covers and art. So it's going to look pretty good. Tagline, best in the galaxy. We have, you know, the cover features, you know, a, a bloody smiling Drax, his hands taped up, and in the background on a fence, intergalactic fight club. So it's clearly CM Punk is keeping it somewhat within his wheelhouse. So yeah, Drax ongoing. 12 issues, it will be a miracle. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, it's Drax. He's a great supporting character. He's a terrific team player. I'm not really aching for a Drax ongoing, but that's not going to start Marvel. By the way, there is supposedly a Gamora ongoing coming, because, you know, since Rocket, Drax, Star-Lord, and and even Groot all have had their own ongoing, she needs one as well, but it's not in this. So that, again, shows that Marvel still clearly has some cards up their sleeves. But anyways... Moving on, Howard the Duck number one, in parentheses, yes, again. And then Howard on the cover going, really? Chip Zdarsky continues to write, Joe Quinones continues to do art, tagline, Howard uh, gets a new hat. And that's appropriate. This is just a straight-up continuation of what's been going on with the character before Secret Wars. And since that's been one of the funniest books Marvels has published in decades, I'm perfectly okay with that. It's a great little book. You should be reading it. No, really, you should be. Go read Howard the Duck. You won't be sorry. Uh, I wish I could say the same about this next book. Nova number one, Sean Ryan writing, Corey Smith on art, Huberto Ramos on covers, tagline, the family business. We have Sam. Yeah, it's the Sam Nova on the cover and what appears to be his father behind him putting his hand on his shoulder. I'm not going to mince words. I'm not a big fan of the Sam, uh, you know, of of the new Nova. I, I just, he doesn't click for me and after we got introduced to the nova family in in the ongoing you know in the secret wars infinity gauntlet i really really hoped those characters would stick around and maybe they still will maybe they still will you know it was an african-american family and including a dog who became a nova and i mean it's just it's a great you know the lead is is a young african-american girl she'd be far much more she's a much more interesting character in just two issues than sam has been in his entire run i'm sorry it's no offense to ryan i know the character has his fans I mean, uh, to be fair, he's nowhere near as awful in the comic as he has been in the Spider-Man cartoon, where he's just been, he's been the worst. He's been the absolute worst, so, but, you know, he, he he's a creation of Jeff Loeb, and Jeff Loeb has lots of power at Marvel, so we're going to keep getting him shoved down our throat, whether we like it or not. Oh, well. Next, Star-Lord number one, Sam Humphrey's writing, Dave Johnson covers an art, tagline, feels like the first time, feels like the very first time. Again, this is just a continuation of pre-Secret Wars, and I'm sure it'll be a good book. Sorry, I, I just don't have much to say about that. Moving on, we have a character who appears to be getting in his own lawn going again, and what's interesting is the subtitle. We have Venom, Space Knight, number one, written by Robbie Thompson, art by Ariel L. Olivetti. Tagline, sometimes a hero needs a little space. Yeah, this is the um, Flash Thompson Venom. He's been, you know, a hero for quite a while now, and he's been in space for the last, I think, year or two. So he's getting a new ongoing. The interesting thing is Space Knight. We have on a cover Venom, and then we have a character I don't quite recognize, but certainly doesn't look like a Space Knight. 
I'm hoping that title... There was talk that they'd be bringing back the Space Knights, which Rom, the Space Knight, if you want to know more about one of my favorite Marvel characters, go. Lee Cara did a really good couple videos on it, far better than I could go into here. I'm hoping that either, A, this is not the return of the Space Knights we were talking about, or that at least if this is, then the actual Space Knights will show up in this book. I don't know. Regardless, Robbie Thompson is a good up-and-coming writer at Marvel. Olivetti's a terrific artist. I like the cosmic side. I will probably buy this book, or at least read it. All right, moving back to Earth, we have a couple of S.H.I.E.L.D. books. First, Halle Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. Written by Frank Barbary, art by Brent Schoonover. I am not overly familiar with this creative team. But I, I like the concept now. This is basically, when it says Howling Commandos, it actually means this is S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Monster Squad. You have characters like Man-Thing, the recent creation Kid Abomination, uh, older, more established characters like Werewolf by Night, Glom. And then, interestingly, we have Dum Dum Dungan, who I would bet is leading. We have Looks Like a Zombie, who may be Jasper Stitwell. Um, and we have Hip Monkey. I love Hip Monkey. Such a ridiculous, ridiculous character. He's he's a monkey who, through complicated means, became a hitman. Uh, yeah, he's a creation of Daniel Way, a writer I find very hit or miss, but I liked, I liked Hip Monkey. I'm disappointed by one thing. In, in this image, Hip Monkey originally wore like a suit. So it's a monkey in a suit, which just in two guns, which is awesome. Here they've got him wearing a shield outfit. And the suit is the source of his power, Marvel! No! Don't take away the suit! Regardless, tagline. To fight the monsters of the world, we need the monsters of the night. Uh, I, You know, it's the kind, exactly the kind of concept I would, I would expect to see a couple young and up-and-coming creators who I'm not overly familiar with. On the last Halley Commandos book was ugh, a few years back was shit, just utter shit. But this already looks better. I, I Dum Dum, as you know, is, is technically been dead, so how we're bringing him back, I'm not sure. There, there's there's potential here if done correctly. How about we leave it at that? Meanwhile, it appears that the Shield book is getting a relaunch, and Mark Wade sadly is leaving, but he's being replaced by Mark Guggenheim, you know, the guy who's been doing who's responsible for. Or perhaps I should say partly responsible for large swaths of the DC cinematic TV universe. Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, things like that. So, you know, wait, is he on Supergirl or is that Berlanti? Well, regardless, he's a proven writer. He's doing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. We have an interesting, bizarre image of what appears to be um, Coulson. Wow, that was bad. Agent Coulson kissing a feminine figure which looks like a maze and has a, a Hydra <coughs> logo on it. We're going for a very, you know, metaphor cover. Tagline, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. I love the S.H.I.E.L.D. I love what Wade's been doing with the S.H.I.E.L.D. book where it's kind of like a Marvel team-up starring, you know, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV characters. But I don't know if that's going to continue with this or not, but I like Guggenheim's work in general and I'm willing to give him a shot with some characters. I just hope we keep the rest of the TV crew around it's not just colson next uncanny humans number one charles soul writing steve mcniven art tagline the silence is broken this is the book well well this is soul continuing his run on humans we've got black bolts front and center again we've got reader we've got trigon and medusa and interestingly we have johnny storm human torch and what appears to be hank mccoy beast and it's modern beast not old beast not young beast so, to a mutant and a member of the Fantastic Four, who are both supposedly verboten, largely at Marvel these days, although don't you entirely believe that about mutants, but still, interesting lineup. Soul has been doing gangbuster work on the Inhumans, and I have no reason to expect he will change on this new book. Basically, it's just a retitling. Okay, of all the books, of all the books in this relaunch, this, this is perhaps the most unexpected and I think depending who you talk to, the most unnecessary. And if it wasn't for the creative team, I... Okay. Karnak, number one. If you don't know, and I don't blame you if you don't, Karnak is one of the main Inhumans. He's the guy in green. He's the guy who can see the weakness in anything. And indeed, that's the tagline is the flaw in all things. He died at the beginning of Souls and Humans, but he saw... But what's going on in the book right now is he basically, in the underworld, you know, in the afterlife, he saw the weakness, the flaw in the afterlife, and used that to escape. So he's apparently back in the living. He was the guy in green in that teaser image. The reason, you know, it's like... 
who in the hell has ever wanted a Karnak ongoing? A Karnak solo book? Well, the writer is Warren Ellis, and that immediately gives the book some credibility. Yeah, Warren Ellis is doing a Karnak book. Art is by Gerardo Zavino, covers by David Aja, but I mean, the real, the real, you know, it's, it's Warren Ellis that's going to make or break this book. Ellis has had a tendency of coming in lately, and, you know, he took Moon Knight, did a great six issues, he did a great, you know, limited run on Secret Avengers. The question is, how long will Ellis be on this book? I mean, if this is intended, really intended to be an ongoing, and I almost wouldn't be shocked if it's just going to be like a six issue, then okay, it, it, or if Ellis is on the long haul, okay, but if he's only on it for six issues, then this thing ain't even going to make 12, but... I don't know, I don't know, it's Warren Ellis, so I can't completely write it off, but I'm scratching my head here. I can only assume that Ellis had an incredible idea, or or Marvel approached Ellis and said, we want you to do something in humans, because we want to push in humans, and then Ellis looked at things and went, you know what, I can do something with Karnak, and Marvel went, go for it. I... Whatever, Karnak, getting his own ongoing, yay! Next, Angela, Asgard's Assassin number one is continuing. Margaret Bennett will continue to be writer. Kim Giacettino and Stephine Hamm so will be art. Julian Totino Tradesco will be doing covers. Tagline, Hell, as in H-E-L, as in the Asgardian version of Hell, half a new fury. And on the cover, we have Angela wearing what looks like Hell, because in addition to the place, it's also a character wearing hell, a variation on Hell's outfit. So that's interesting. Angela's been a fun book. Uh, this is... You know, this is the best the character's ever had. Certainly far better than when she was hanging around. I mean, except for the the scant times when Neil Gaiman wrote her. But largely when she was hanging around in Spawn doing nothing. So, I've really enjoyed this run. And I expect to continue to enjoy it when it continues post-Secret Wars. Now it's time for Squadron Supreme, number one. Written by James Robinson. Art by Leonard Kirk. Covers by Alex Ross. Tagline. Soul survivors of their own worlds. They'll do anything to protect this one. This brings together characters from different fallen universes, including Hyperion, King, you know, Hyperion, Thundera, um, a character from the New Universe, the Nighthawk from a different, from basically the Supreme Universe, and a version of Doctor Spectrum from Hickman's run. And the idea is that they're all heroes who who now live on this Earth, but they remember their old worlds, and they're determined to do whatever it takes to save it. It's a really neat concept. Robinson and Kirk gave a terrific interview about this a couple weeks back, and I am, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this book. Robinson does great team stuff. He's always been strong at that. And the concept's really neat. How do these people from another world adapt to what in some cases are very is a very different universe than their own? So... This is, I think, one to keep an eye out. I think this one's going to surprise people and really impress. Time to take a deep breath, people. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's time to close things out with the X-Men. Okay, then. Starting out with Extraordinary X-Men. Number one, Jeff Lemire writing. Huberto Ramos on art. Tagline, still hated, still feared, still standing. This creative team, again, this is, these are two people I would, I, I'd follow almost anywhere. Jeff Lemire and Huberto Ramos, especially when he's got a strong writer, and Lemire definitely counts. The team consists of Storm, Nightcrawler, uh, um, Colossus, Iceman, Magic, Young Jean Grey, and Old Man Logan. And boom, they're sold. I, it's funny, considering how much I, I, different I was to Mark Millar's Old Man Logan story, I'm actually really, really excited to see Old Man Logan brought into the modern-day Marvel Universe because on his own, it's basically just a dystopian story. And we've seen those done a lot of times and fine. It was, you know, it was a decent riff on Unforgiven set in the in a post-apocalyptic Marvel Universe and it was fine. It was fine. But I, I, I love the idea, though, of bringing back this older version of Logan in the same way that I loved bringing forward the young versions of the original X-Men because there's so much story potential in the idea. This is a Logan, and, and it was something Lemire talked about briefly in the interview. This is a Logan who not only has seen all his friends die, spoiler warning, he was responsible for killing them. He was tricked into killing the X-Men, and he's haunted, absolutely haunted by it. And by the end of the Old Man Logan series, he's kind of gotten back in the game. But the idea that he's hanging around with these people who, who he, you know, he remembers dying, he remembers killing. Well, that's just a fascinating setup. And then you also bring in young Jean Grey. That's going to make things complicated. So, you know, and, and Logan tends to have strong relationships with young girls. Not in that way, sickos. So, 
Uh, I, I think he's got... Lemire sounds really excited to do this. He sounds energized, and that, to me, tends to make for good comics. Then we have Uncanny X-Men number one, written by the land himself, Cullen Bunn. Art by Greg Land. Oh, dear. Tagline, bigger threats require more threatening X-Men. This is kind of maybe our X-Force. We have Magneto... Uh, Sabretooth, Psylocke, Mystique, and Phantom X on the cover. Okay. Ugly elephant in the room. Greg Land. I've never really been a fan of Greg Land, but in the last few years, his art has just reached abysmal levels. Again, you can go recently, Carr just recently reviewed the first couple issues of Supreme Power, which is a great example of of Greg Land and his absolute nadar. But, but, credit where it's due. As I will cover this weekend on my Secret Wars reviews, He's actually doing decent work in Future Imperfect. Not great work. Not even remotely great work. Barely good, but at least decent work. So maybe Uncanny will be readable, but you'll be pardoned. I mean, look, Cullen Bunn is a great writer. If you're not reading The Six Gun, then you are just, you are so missing out. But it's, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna hobble this book. It really is. Land is not a great artist. I wish, I, I you know, I hate to say this because I know a guy's got to eat, but I kind of wish he would stop getting work. At least of books I care about. Go over to DC, Greg, and ruin their books. Ugh, fine. I I don't know if I'll read... I'll probably read... The, I have a Marvel Unlimited, so this will not be a book I buy, because I just can't buy Greg Land, but I'll probably read it when it eventually comes there, so... Ugh. I, I, I like... I mean, you know, Sabretooth, I wonder, will he still be, you know... Because Sabretooth was kind of, in the aftermath of Axis, was forced to be good. Will we be getting that secret? Sabretooth, it's hard to say, because on the cover, he's looking all maddy and killy, but I don't know. Uh, you know, and then the rest of the team, I like Mystique, I like Magneto, Cullen Bunn does good Magneto, so this is basically Bunn continuing his Magneto run, I think, and expanding it more, and that's great. He's been doing terrific, terrific stuff. So, I, it'll be well written, if nothing else, and I'll probably just have to choke down the art. All New X-Men, number one, written by Dennis Hopeless. Art by Mac, Mark Bagley. This is continuing what the, you know, Bendis has left the X-Men. And this is continuing the adventures of the young X-Men brought to future times. And we, so we, but Sans, Jean Grey, who's over in other books. So we have Archangel, Iceman, Cyclops, Beast, and Laura, who I'll get to Laura more in a minute. Tagline, on a mission to make their own future. Oh, so the con- so we have the team up in costume on the top of the cover, but below we have them in civilian clothes, riding on a big Scooby-Doo-style bus. You know, all sitting in civilian clothes, and it's like driving along, and Iceman's looking at the map, and... Yes! So what? This is this is Dennis Hopeless taking them on a road trip across America, like Route 66 or Green Lantern, Green Arrow style? Oh my god! I, I, I am completely down for that concept. I don't know. You can probably hear my voice. That's the kind of concept that makes me giggle. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I love bringing forward the young X-Men. I love this. Yes, let's do this. So, uh, yeah, as you can tell, I, I, I really am a big fan of Mark Bagley. I, I know some people, he's not everybody's cup of tea, but I, I enjoy his work immensely. So you, you pair him with Hopeless with a great concept. I think this book's going to be a lot of fun. Next up, Old Man Logan, number one, Jeff Lemire writing, Andrea Sorrenti, art, tagline, older, wiser, sharper. Yeah, this makes sense. Again, Logan is, you know, since young Logan, as it were, is dead, it makes as much sense as anything to bring Old Man Logan in post-Secret Wars. I, I, you know, Lemire, again, I've talked several times about how good Lemire is. He can do well with a character like this. You know, the cover shows both present day and then his destroyed dystopian future. Uh, we could get a different Logan, maybe an, both an angrier, yet more... You know, he's the one who's seen the worst case scenario. There's a lot you could do with this concept, and I'm excited to see what Lemire does. Finally, no, not quite finally yet, we have All New Wolverine number 1, written by Tom Taylor, art by David Lopez, and best there is at what... She does. That's right. X-23 is the new Wolverine. She has a new costume. On the cover, she's going, if you want to tangle with someone, why not try your luck against the new Wolverine? I, I've loved Laura slash X-23 for years now. I, I thought she was a fun concept. She, 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 she was first introduced. It's a neat take on the whole Wolverine concept, but at the same time, she's not just a cheap knockoff. She has a unique origin. She, she has a unique setup. She's a strong character, and a number of writers over the years have done great work 
building her up, and it's great to see her get the nod like this. So yeah, she's going to be Wolverine also in all new X Men. I think it's great. I, I, I absolutely believe the character could support her own solo series. Why not? You know, if we can, ha- you know, it, it, between that old man Logan, the Wolverine side, things are in a good place. Honestly, this is probably too much to hope for because things always reset. But in my dream world, I'd never bring back Logan because we've got old man Logan and we've got Laura. Why not just keep old man Logan around? And that way we can. I, 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 it won't happen eventually. You know, it might take years and years. Eventually, things will probably reset. But then again. Who knows? Who knows? I will enjoy it while it lasts. And finally, last but certainly not least, as he will be quick to tell you, Deadpool number one, written by Jerry Doug- Gary Duggan, art by Mike Hawthorne, covers by Tony Moore, tagline, more Deadpool than you wanted. The cover is Deadpool's being worshipped and loved on the, you know, like in the middle of New York as a Macy's Day parade balloon goes of Deadpool goes overhead. And look, Gary Duggan has been having... Again, getting back to what I was saying about other characters, he's been having one of those seminal runs on Deadpool. So, uh, this is basically him continuing his run, and it will be good, because his run on Deadpool has been classic. You know, just great, up there with the best, which was the original Deadpool run. So, I don't make that comparison lightly. So, really not much else to say. Kind of an anti climat I, I know, but it's it's more Deadpool. Yay. Uh, it's just more Deadpool than we want it, but honestly, you know, showing up in one team book and his own solo, that's actually not more Deadpool than I want. That sounds like about the right level of Deadpool. So, that is the all-new, all-different Marvel, and overall, I'm really excited for this, as you can probably tell. There are some, obviously, there's some books that are more appealing to me personally than others, but overall, as a line-wide thing... This is really exciting. The books that were already good, a lot of them are continuing their runs, so we're going to have strong teams, proven teams, picking up with characters with what they knew. But meanwhile, we're also getting a lot of a lot of unique, well, new concepts. We're getting, you know, it's not so much a dramatic reinvention as it is a reshuffling, but it's an interesting reshuffling. We're seeing characters go where they might not have necessarily gone before. We're seeing unique teams. We're seeing fresh pairings, and that's great. That's really great. Not to go there or anything, but yeah, unlike, say, the New 52 or even the recent post-convergence from DC Comics, this feels more concentrated. This feels fresher. This feels more like actually trying some new things within the framework of the established. So it kind of feels like best of both worlds. And it also feels like a lot of really great talent is getting put forward. And not just rehashing old talent, which, again, feels a bit too dominant at DC these days. I just, I hate to say it. I mean, or it's been the problem at least for the last few years. I I don't want to turn this into a bashing DC fest. I, I just don't. But I will say that, yeah, this has got me very pumped and primed. And I think... If you're at all even remotely a fan of the Marvel characters, there's every reason to be looking forward to the end of Secret Wars and what comes next. Because clearly there's some cool stuff coming. I'm loving Secret Wars, as I will talk about this weekend when I get to my second episode of my Secret Wars reviews. There's a lot of books to cover there. But for now, that is... That's more than enough for me. God, I thought I was done with these hour-long episodes, but... Apparently not. I got at least a couple more before things go back to normal. That's just the, the news broke, and... God only knows what I'll be talking about next week with San Diego Comic-Con, but for now, I'm just going to go rest my poor, weary throat. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, if you're seeing this via iTunes, please leave a review, leave a comment. They really do help, and they're greatly appreciated. They help spread the word about the show. If you're watching this via Unrepented Geeking or Channel Awesome, please check out the link to my Patreon. It's at unre- it's at Patreon slash Unrepented Geeking. There's links on UnrepentedGeeking.com all over the place. Even just a couple bucks could make a huge difference in me keeping the lights on around here and me being able to do more stuff. And we've got a lot in the pipeline, a lot of fun things coming down the line. So look forward to it. And it's so until then, until next time, for Channel Awesome and Unrepentant Geeking, I'm Sean Cronenfeld wishing you all long days and pleasant nights. <laughs>